In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to write and load our own JSON file. So JSON stands for the JavaScript Object Notation. It is a file format um, that allow us to store data. It's also one of the most commonly used data format out there. Um, so when you are using and sourcing different kinds of data from the web, oftentimes it is going to come in as a JSON file. And based on the name, you might be already be able to guess that um, it is related and actually derived from JavaScript, except JSON actually is highly flexible and is compatible with all kinds of programming languages uh, beyond JavaScript, including Python, PHP, Ruby, and Java. Okay, so without further ado, we are going to create our first um, JSON file. And we can actually just make one from inside a P5. So what you would do is you would um, open your root folder and you would click on that little arrow and click on create file. And here I can just type data.json and that's gonna let me just create a JSON file um, that live at the root of our P5 folder. And inside of here, um, we can begin to write our JSON. So all JSON files are made out of <laughs> object, which is indicated by the pair of curly bracket and array. <laughs> We're going to start with just the object and the basic starting point is that all the data is going to be contained inside a pair of curly bracket, which is the object. And I can actually begin to write, you know, my first item here. So I can say, you know, um, maybe first name and colon and after you finish your first item you have to write comma and write the second item and here maybe I can say um, last name colon Xing <laughs> and I can go on to the third one maybe I can say um, gender colon non-binary so you can go on and on, but you can see that now I have created an object um, in my JSON file and they contain three different items. And so if I then want to come back um, into my sketch JS, if I want to access that JSON file that I have just created, what I need to do is I need to um, create a variable to hold my JSON file and I also need to use function preload. So just as loading a media file, you will also use the same method to load your JSON file. So I'm going to write my data equals to load JSON and inside of that indicate the root which is data.json Cool. So, so now then I can go into like, for example, my setup and I can actually just first console.log my data and just kind of get a peek of what's inside of that. And, and when I do that, you can see that, um, you know, a bunch of stuff came up, but basically we have um, successfully loaded our object from our JSON file into the space here, right? So. So now if I want to then, um, you know, like load a specific item from my object, I can then kind of like go down the list and try to do that. So for example, I can now type my data dot first name. And if I do that, I'm going to get Xing. And I can also do my data dot gender, right? And so, so this is um, the basic, maybe like the ba most basic uh, JSON structure possible. So what we're going to do next is actually translating um, a 
piece of data that's a little more complex into JSON. So, so the data that I have here is a collection of, you know, the, the different Zoom meetings <laughs> that I, I have scheduled in the last three days. So, so basically what you're seeing here is, is a table that I kind of drew um, that record every single time I um, get on Zoom for a meeting. So you can see on day, there's three days right now. On day one, um, I started my first Zoom meeting at 11.30, which I translated into decimal numbers, which will be 11.5 11 and 12. And um, it works in 24 hour system. So one, one o'clock in the afternoon and 30 minutes. And this is eight o'clock, right? So, so I have these, um, like data set here now to to work with and we're gonna work on translating this into JSON so let's head back to this and actually what I want to introduce to you next um, is a website called JSON lint there are actually many different kinds of J uh, websites like this um, that essentially help you validate your code, your JSON code, and just make sure that um, you're typing all the right syntax. Um, so it's helpful to do this before you put this into the P5 space sometimes. So what I'm going to do next is translating my three days of Zoom data <laughs> into a JSON file. And so um, let's see, I have three days. And so I have day one, day two, day three. So what I'm going to do is come back here. First, in order to create you know, anything at all, you have to first add um, the opening and curly bracket. And the first item I am going to insert into my JSON object is um, the word day one. Okay, and I'm gonna follow that by a colon. And on the right hand side of that day one, um, we can either put, you know, a, a, a string or a number or a true false or another object. Right, so that's what I'm going to do right now. So now we have uh, something called the nested object, object that com is contained within an object, which is a very, very common, you know, thing that you're gonna see when you look at JSON files just in general. So, so here um, I am going to write day one, and I'm gonna create a, a new um, key. So, so whatever you see like on the left-hand side of the column, which indicates the category of the data, um, is called a key. So here I'm going to write start zoom, which is the, you know, the, the category name, and colon. And I'm going to actually um, use a array to store the different data points I have. So if I come back here, um, I'm just going to like record this number in there by typing in 11.5, 12, 13.5, 20. Okay, and notice that since we're working with JSON, you don't, you don't have to add a semicolon or a comma like at the, you know, when, when, when there's only one line or when, when it's the, the last line inside an object. <laughs> so <clears throat> by that, I meant if I, if I had like two different items, then I have to add a comma in between them to like distinguish them. But since I only have one, then I don't need a comma. So now I can um, go on ahead and create my day two. Again, colon followed by a set up curly bracket and I'm going to again write start zoom because they're like the same category um, of data and inside of that I'm just gonna um, manually type in these numbers so they are 6, 7, 7.2, 7 7.4, 8, 8.5, 
10.5, 11. Okay, so I'm typing a bunch of stuff. Um, so what you can do inside of JSON Lint is you can like now actually click on validate JSON, and you know, and actually it shows you what is wrong. I actually like had a typo, right? So between every object um, that you write that you create inside of JSON, you also have to add a comma in between to distinguish them um, when they are at the same um, level of hierarchy. So let me uh, validate that again. Okay, so now it's working. Now it's okay, right? It says validate JSON down here. So now I'm gonna make my third one. So add a comma <laughs> between this object and the next, and I'm going to write day three and colon. And again, I'm going to use the same thing here, except with a different set of data. So it's, 12, 12.4, and 13. So I'm gonna validate my JSON again, just to make sure everything's okay. And I can now then copy this, come back, oops, and I'm gonna override um, the data I have here. So I'm gonna um, actually then go on ahead and go back to my P5, and now I can actually load my data from my JSON file and visualize them, which is super exciting. And so let's see what we have to do here. Um, I'm just going to first, you know, test it out. So I'm going to say my data dot day one, right? Because that's like our first object over here. And so if I click on play, I'm going to see, of course, um, an object that contains um, start zoom, which is another object, which then, um, you know, points to like the array, um, which has four different numbers in here. And now I can, you know, like get more specific. So, so let's say if I type dot start zoom and typing the number zero, I should get 11.5 in my console.log right? Because we're just going layer and layer down um, into our nested object to find the right value to take from. So, so now um, what I can, you know, there are many different ways I can display this data. Um, what I am going to do perhaps is actually writing a for loop. So I'm going to say for let i equals to zero i smaller than, well, it's actually pretty long. So it's going to be my data dot day one dot start zoom dot length and i plus plus. So in this way, um, it finds the length of that very particular array. And it, so you know how many, how many of them to load. And now I can maybe, um, let's say, I can like do a ellipse and I'm going to say um, actually my data dot day one dot start zoom and I, and I'm gonna make the position something like 100 for the Y and then 10, 10. So, so if I do this, um, you can see that my the, the differences between every single one of my data point is very, very small. So what we need to do is exaggerating it a little bit so that it's going to actually, you know, have a, a visual distinction and contrast. So this is the basics of how you would um, load a JSON and display it on the screen. Um, of course, if I want to, you know, show the other <laughs> sets the other day, I have to create multiple for loop so that I can actually pick a very specific day. And, and that they're all overlapping right now. So you can also display the Y position, for example. So, so this is just, you know, an intro to, to how you would take your JSON file, load it, and um, display it 
inside of your P5 canvas.